Happy New Year, golf friends, and welcome to our webinar series, Tuesday Traces. I hope that you all had a wonderful Christmas and that Santa left you lots of new golf training aids, including the V1 pressure mat. As we start the last week of this very crazy 2020, I would like to thank all of you for tuning in and for your sweet messages and support. Cheers to you. Thank you so much for this platform. We've had a lot of fun this year. This is my 16th Tuesday Trace with the best team on the planet. All the girls are here. Um, the recording of tonight's webinar will be available on the V1 Sports YouTube channel in a few days. Um, if you're registered, you'll automatically receive the recording via email. Um, if you have friends looking, please tell them to just um, go to the YouTube channel and you'll see the recording. Uh, Cheryl has, I've had tons of people asking for the recording already. We love answering questions throughout the evening. I've already received a lot of questions, so please post them in the chat window on Facebook or Zoom. Uh, we will interrupt Cheryl as she speaks and teaches us and get to all the questions as we can. V1 Sports is a 25-year-old company and the leader in delivering video analysis and instruction solutions to golfers and golf instructors around the world. We are lucky enough, enough to support world cat class golf instructors like Mike Bender, Bender and Cheryl Anderson so that they can keep growing this wonderful game of golf using the best video analysis technology in the industry. I am Mandy Von C, Southeast Regional Sales Manager for V1 Sports based in Charleston, South Carolina. As you saw from the chat, I am a Clemson, South Carolina graduate and will be watching my Tigers this weekend against all you Ohio State Buckeyes fans. I'm a beginner golfer, but I have learned a ton about my own swing and this V1 pressure mat technology from hosting Tuesday Traces. Uh, I've been able to talk to some of the smartest and coolest golf instructors on the planet. Tonight is absolutely no exception. Cheryl, thank you so much for joining us. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a real pleasure to be here. Uh, we, we, are, we are honored. You're, uh, we're so excited. Cheryl is the Director of Instruction at Mike Menders Golf Academy in Lake Mary, Florida. It is not slow, snowing in Florida either. She is the very first Golf Digest America's Top 50 teacher to join us on Tuesday Traces. I'm really honored. I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your time. I know you've been teaching all day. Yeah, it feels good to sit down, that's for sure. <laughs> and you have you been this crazy busy the whole week between the two holidays? Well, I did take a few days off for Christmas, but okay, it's, good. it's been a busy year. <laughs> good, good. It's that uh, we might be one of the only industries to be able to say that. Okay, Cheryl has been recognized by Golf Magazine as one of America's top 100 teachers since 2013. She is one of the LPGA's top 50 teachers and won the LPGA Teacher of the Year in 2006. Uh, she certainly has a teaching resume. You guys know, you've heard me say it a hundred times, your pro should play golf. Your pro should play, your pro should play. Well, listen to this. Cheryl is one of the best female club pro players ever. In 2004, she earned the Met PGA Section Women's Player of the Year Award for the fifth season in a row. That's never been done. Has it since been done? That's a historic event, right? That's never been done before. I think it's still holding. That's pretty cool. And, <laughs> and the Met section's the, one of the most challenging, as far as I know, right? It is. They have a very competitive uh, crew up there. So that was a real treat. And I, uh, I have to thank Mike Bender for that because I never would have accomplished it without him. That's so cool. Uh, one more thing. She's also the first woman to win all three of the Met PGA Women's events in one season. That's pretty amazing. Um, so Cheryl, what an amazing resume and playing career. I got to know what got you started in golf? Um, I always hit balls growing up, up in Lake Placid, New York. I grew up in Connecticut, but my grandfather had a, an area where I just grew up hitting balls. And I actually started hitting balls with hickory golf clubs. That's, Are you serious? Uh, that's how old I am. And that's probably why I needed Mike Bender so badly because my swing was horrendous. It was long, loopy from using, they didn't have US kids clubs back then, you know? <laughs> that, that's really funny because before we even started, we got a question and it's about club length. And I'm gonna scroll back to it because this person emailed us and sent it through. Uh, he says, driver length, 43 and a half works for me at five, eight tall. Too long for most players. He thinks the clubs are, the current drivers are way too long. Would you agree with that? I totally agree. Stock driver in a men's shaft is 45 inches. So 
I, I believe Nick Faldo used to use a club that was about 43 inches long when he played his best. So yeah, I would agree with you. That's how about that? See there, we see Dennis already. <laughs> we haven't even gotten through our intro and we're already answering amazing questions. Okay. Um, I know you've been at Mike's Academy for 10 years. Um, super successful Academy. We love having both of you guys in the V1 family. Can you share a little bit about, you know, V1 sports, the video analysis software, when you got it, when you started using it and how you use it in your lessons, the, the software specifically? Yeah. I mean, I've always used V1 software even before coming to Mike's, but it's a staple. Any video lesson we give, we are using the V1 software. And it was so nice when body track integrated with you all. It's just a seamless system for us to use. That's so cool. Are you doing voiceover video lessons that you send back to the student after they leave? Absolutely. So we, we typically do a, a before with the student. They come in, we analyze it. Then we do an after with the drills, showing them the before and after swing. But then we also do the voiceover explaining, this is how we want you to train and practice. That's awesome. Um, we're getting so many questions. It's, it's awesome. Okay. Uh, so how long ago did you add the pressure mat? And then, and when you got it in your hands, how long did it take you to figure it out? You know, I guess it was about three years ago. Um, another PGA pro, Michael Wheeler, came over and showed it to us. And we were like, oh, we got to have this. This is a no brainer. So it was pretty easy to operate and use. We, as soon as we set it up, we were using it the next day. Right. So it's plug and play. And I always talk about that. That's super easy to set it up. But earlier, when we were looking through your videos and you're scrolling through, and I always like to sort of watch a pro drive their own V1, right? Because you can tell a lot about how they teach based on how, and you were glancing at your traces and you were nailing, you were naming the traces each time you saw one, linear trace, fish hook. So a lot of people, instructors, you know, we talk about the different traces. Do you, do you get, do you get stuck on this, you know, analyze or decide, telling the person, okay, this is a fish hook. This is a linear and diagnosing those actual funny names of those traces. Yeah, I think that. they I think they stick pretty clearly. You know, a fish hook is so clear to see. I mean, <laughs> um, and it's easy for the student to watch that white ball, the center of pressure, just kind of trace right over that fish hook. And then I'll I usually have the models up there too of traces that I would prefer to see, more mm -hmm. of a linear trace. Mm -hmm. And so comparing them side to side, it's easy for them to see the difference. Yeah, I agree. When I'm yeah, I love on I think it, did Terry come up with all those names, like the abbreviated trace and the Z trace, uh, the scatter, the scatter. Trace. Uh, yep. that's what I use. It's great. Yeah. He calls the uh, scatter trace, the money trace. Cause he said, if you get a scatter trace, that's a super <laughs> beginner golfer. And you're about to make big improvements on their golf swing with the pressure mat, which, which my, I started with the scatter trace, but I love the, um, you know, I have a mat and I'm a beginner golfer and I love to try to aim for linear on my mat. And I think that's much easier to do than it is to, to explain because when you see those lines they look a little confusing but when you're standing there and you're actually interpreting them while you're on the mat it's a lot easier so that's why I was asking about those traces um, yeah and it's so clear I mean just having uh, a beginner like yourself stand on the mat and just kind of going all the way on your toes back in your heels so you can see where the pressure is I don't know about you but I find a lot of people set up too far on their toes so just having them get the right feel and we have the monitor right on the wall in front so they can clearly see where the pressure is and they can't believe it in the beginning, right? They're like, oh yeah, I can't believe I'm not far never, forward. Yeah, you would have, ne you never can, you're like, no way, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, that couldn't be mine. Terry, another hash, hashism that I love about the weight and the toes is he says the toes are your brakes and the heels are your accelerators. Yeah, that's a good and one. That is such a great thing for me to, to remember to keep the weight back so that I can, you know, move through the ball rather than mm -hmm. breaking in my toes. Um, so I have some good news. Uh, we, I asked my team about your, your certifications with V1 and V1 Sports has a certification program and my team wanted me uh, our, our gate asked me to do the honor of letting you know that we have certified you as a master V1 professional. Wow. Don't you want to wait until after the seminar is over to make sure Maybe. I earn that? Maybe. 
Maybe. But thank you very much. I'm totally kidding. I'm totally kidding. I already know what you're going to talk about. And we're really honored to have you as part of the family. So there are, um, I don't even know how many masters there are, but we would like to send you a master V1 certification. So anyone um, wanting to earn the, a certification, we have multiple different levels. Uh, email certification at v1sports.com. Certification is singular, v1sports.com. Okay, during your successful teaching career, you've become skilled at working with uh, all levels of golfers. I read that you um, you work with all levels. I'm assuming in Florida, there's some older folks, but there's oh, a yeah. program as well. You've got the whole spectrum. Yep, yep, love <laughs> that. Um, so we've seen golf grow during COVID and more juniors pick up this game than most other sports. I, I gotta say, especially after watching little Charlie Woods last weekend, I know my kids are all about the, the golf now, but um, specifically you're working with a pretty special young man, Chris ah. Nickick, um, yeah. who was the first Down syndrome person to complete an Ironman, which is absolutely spectacular. He's amazing. Um, I'd really, you know, this is your passion. I want you to talk about it, but specifically as we're thinking about our New Year's resolutions, can you tell us about Chris's 1% better system? Yeah, so Chris is a 21-year-old boy with Down syndrome, and I've taught him golf on and off since he was about 12 years old, and he loves the game. Um, but he was out of shape. He was um, slow, heavy, and his parents you know, were like, you got to start working out. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, do one push-up today. That's how it started. He couldn't even do one push-up, and this is literally a year and a half ago. So then the next day, his dad said, let's get 1% better, right? Let's see if you can get to two push-ups. So he kept that mindset every single day. And before you know it, he had this big dry erase board up in his bedroom. If you follow him on Instagram, it's incredible. He right. started writing down every accomplishment, right? And he started to see the success and he started to get fit and strong. And then all of a sudden he's like, I want to run an Ironman. Okay. And his dad doesn't ask why he just says how do we do it so they got in touch with a few key people in the special olympics and the kid ran the iron man last month he made it, it in 16 hours right and so it's incredible and now he wants to become a 10 handicap golfer so he's going to use that same mindset and right now he's shooting he shot a 66 from the red tees the other day we went out and got a baseline where he is so you know what I think he's going to do it. He's got the best mindset in the world. If we could all do a little bit of that, we'd come a we we definitely reach our goals. Yeah, I um I'm totally going to adopt this with putting. I am the worst putter, <laughs> and if I can get one percent better with my putting every day, I'm going to do it. I'm going to take the thirty minutes before every Tuesday trace, and I'm going to be putting in my living room back here, and I'm going to take Nick's uh, Chris's advice. Um, there you the go. girls have put Chris's Instagram a pan or account in our chat. You guys go follow him. He's and amazing. I'd also really like to hook him up with V1 Golf so that he can send his swing to you. Perfect. So we'd like to give him golf and V1 game. So if he's on the course, you can collect his data. Um, so if we can, uh, we definitely want to hook him up and everyone should follow him. I'm super excited to, to watch his. Uh, that sounds great. Thank sure. you, Mandy. Okay, so let's hear a little bit about how you're using the pressure mat. Are you going to put Chris on the mat? Absolutely. I can't wait to see that. You'll have to capture his trace. Do you put all your students on the mat? Um, I would say 90%. You know, especially when I have a new student come to me, I like to see what's going on in the ground for sure. Um, do you see dramatically different uh, traces for younger versus older golfers? I see a lot of Z traces in the younger golfers. 100%. Is that the jump? Yeah, they're jumping, they're falling back, they're trying to get some dynamic loft through impact because they're so small, right? They're trying to right. launch it up in the air. And I've, I do have a before and after video of one that hopefully we'll get to a little bit later. Cool. I've seen that um, jumping right. in- It's okay to do it on the driver because you want to launch it high. But when you get to the irons and you have that same pattern, it's just really hard to compress the ball. And, you know, we did a, an analysis. This is a little high level, but we did an analysis with a long driver and they jump too, don't they? Oh, yeah. They use yeah. a lot of vertical forces. So it's not a bad thing. But, 
yeah, when the ball's on the ground, it's it gets a little wild if you do that. So sometimes a Z trace is good. Sometimes. Absolutely. Okay. Um, someone's asking if we're going to see how the mat works. Yes, we're going to see videos here in a second of the mat. Um, okay. So my next question was, do you take it outside? I know you take it outside. Yes, um, I do. How I often do it. you do that? Um, I'm actually going to do it more and more now. I just started doing it probably a few months ago. And it's so easy. I mean, I literally roll it up. I put it in the golf cart and take it on the golf course. That's so cool. So um, I'd love for you to pull up. The, the folks are tired of me talking and they want to see some of your videos. So I'm going to just talk about the mat while you get the screen share going. But you guys, when Cheryl's in her golf studio, she has the mat hardwired so she can capture face on and down the line videos um, with pressure. When she takes the mat outside, um, she uses her mobile device. So it's a wireless setup. So Cheryl's using her phone. She's doing a screen share right now. We're going to look at some videos that will have pressure mat data in the video. Um, and the cool thing about this is Cheryl can take it out. It's wireless. It is um, the question there about rainproof. It is, we call it waterproof. You can stand on, you can put it on wet grass. You can stand on it with wet shoes. I tell people not to throw it in the ocean, but you know, it's a nice uh, piece of technology. So I would definitely keep it out of the, the, you know, major submersion, but it is absolutely sort of waterproof as far as wet dew and grass and wet shoes. So Cheryl, who are we looking at? Uh, this is a girl, Alyssa. She plays in college and she struggled with her chipping. So we went out into the golf course, threw the mat down. And um, un unfortunately, I don't have the before. I deleted it, but I could tell you that she was like 50-50 on her on her feet. Let's see if I can blow this up. So this is a good one. We got her to about 80% on the, her left foot. And you see that white center pressure ball. It's, it's not moving that much, right? There's a little motion in there on that basic chip shot. Mm -hmm. but we just don't want to see that moving around too much. And she's primarily staying over that left foot. So again, it just showcases how easy it is. I just threw it out on the near the putting green on the golf course. That's so cool. Um, boy, I can show you. Which way do you want me? You want me to stay kind of on that theme on the golf course for a minute? Yeah, yeah, we love. Yeah, you know. Okay. The, they're asking questions. Just keep going. Um, Let's go with. Let me get the right one here. All right. Can you see that? Okay. Yes, it looks great. All right, so she's hitting an iron. This is a girl who has a Z trace with her driver and she hits her driver really well, but she always complains that her irons aren't solid. She's not hitting enough greens in regulation. She's coming up short a lot. She's chunking them. So if you watch her come down to impact here, you're gonna see that white center of pressure ball just back up. So by the time she's at impact, Let's see if I can blow this up a little bit. It says 43% if I back it up a little bit there. Yep. Okay, so clearly she's not on her lead side compressing the ball. Right. So what we did, let me just get out of here. I can almost you. see that. You can almost see her left foot coming off the ground. Yeah, she's a big jumper. So I said, okay, well, let's, let's try this little step drill, right? Get that pressure going over there so we can see now she's up to like 90 percent on the left yep so we did that a few times and then uh the next shot i think it's this one this was on the next hole a little sunnier out so look at the difference here yeah. right she's completely over that left side now 77 wow <laughs> Amazing. Right. That, that was like in two holes. 43% so, to 77. That's awesome. So guys, what we're looking at is the, there's, there's uh, uh, four quadrants here. The top two boxes are toes. The bottom you can consider heels, the right foot, the left foot. So we're looking at the pressure down there to see how much more pressure is getting to her lead edge as Cheryl's working with her and showing her pressure differences. We went from 43 to it looks like 80% there. That's amazing. Yeah, and I mean, the next step for her is really getting that center of pressure down in that lower left quadrant. 
Yeah. But I was, I was happy with that for this particular night. So I'll work towards that. In the Actually, next and thank lessons. you for sharing that, that you're, you're trying to get really more in the heel, all yes. in the left, really more in the heel, but, but much better. I have she's a good so question. far on the ball of her foot. Cause she's a jumper. Right. Right. You can even see it though. And her left heel looks better and more grounded in the ground from those two videos. Oh, um, she hit some great shots after that. Paul Wieland um, is a great golf instructor and also a great fly fisherman. Hi, Paul. Has a good question and also has a pressure mat. For good players, at what point in the swing do you see max pressure on the trail leg? Oh, halfway back. Um, typically halfway back when the lead arm is parallel to the ground. That's when I like to see the lead pressure. Okay. Right? And then, what, then you'll start to de-weight because you're recentering a little bit as you go to the top. So it'll lessen. Yep. He says, at what point do you swing? Do the, in the swing, do you see the pressure start moving towards the lead leg, which you answered? And at what point in the swing do you see the majority of the pressure? You said trail moving? leg, right? Trail leg. So uh, there's a bunch of, at what point in the swing do you see the pressure start moving toward the lead leg after the downswing, I guess? Oh, towards the, okay. Towards the target leg. I'm sorry. I thought you meant on the back. Uh, he's asked so. multiple that he's asked. These are multiple questions in a row. So by the time you're halfway down, then you're going to start seeing the pressure get to the left side very clearly. So hopefully about 70% there and then an impact up to 80, even 90. Yep. Okay. There we go. You answered all of them. Oh, good. Okay. How do you prevent just sliding through the shot with weight on the front foot? How do you turn through the shot? Okay, so I'm going to teach them how to clear their hips and just feel the pressure get into their left heel. I might put an alignment stick through, can you see me okay? Yes, we can. Put an alignment stick like through their belt loops and I might put an object behind them and I have them just kind of knock that object over to get the, get those hips opening better and feel the, again, the pressure just get into that left heel. I also think um, in addition to the drills and there's some cool, crazy drills we've talked about is just seeing it. Like if I, once you see the pressure map of your own weight, do you put the, do you put the map in front of the student and say, do you see this? Like it's like, oh, yeah. go off. For sure. Again, we have that monitor right in front of them. So I'll have them take some practice swings and practice getting that ball into that lower left quadrant if they're struggling with that. And then vice versa. If I have somebody who's, you know, a lot of times people have a hard time turning back. Um, I might encourage them to get more pressure into the right heel and really open up that mm -hmm. right hip. And then I'd want to see that white ball in that lower right quadrant for them. The center of pressure ball. Yes, center okay. pressure. Um, this question, I'm going to ask you this question. It's from Lisa. For transitions, a pro told her to use right foot, flex, and turn. Do not transfer weight to the left. Right what foot, flex, and turn? She, for transition, a pro told her to use right foot, comma, flex, and turn. And do not transfer weight to the left. What would you think so, of this method? She's a right-handed golfer. That perhaps, does not I mean, perhaps she has too much kind of lateral slide going on. Okay. And he's, or she is trying to prevent that because what can happen if the pelvis moves too forward, the upper body tilts away from the target too much. So I'm assuming that's what's going on. If they told you not to transfer the weight too much. Okay. Good, good answer there. That makes sense. Makes sense to me. Thank you for the question, Lisa. All right, let's see another video. Okay, you know, let me show you Austin. Yes, I want to see Austin. Austin's a really great player that you guys work Austin with. Austin Truslow. He, um, he's been with Mike Bender for about 13 years. He's a Corn Ferry Tour player. You will see him on the PGA Tour. He's already made... Uh, He's played in four PGA Tour events already. So he's the real deal. Um, he actually was hitting some wedge shots. We're, the Academy is pretty known for our wedge instruction, thanks to Zach Johnson being such a good wedge player. 
And Mike has developed a wedge range that has been copied around the world. We have cement blocks out there from 30 to 100 yards. So, and we have ropes. We have certain launch angles that we want you to That's strive so for. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we like to see a launch angle of about 25 to 26 degrees with a lob wedge. That's pretty low. So, anyhow, um, for those of the people out there watching, that's pretty much what we're known for. Um, so here's Austin. He is complaining of a little higher trajectory. It was reaching kind of the top bar on our wedge range. I wish I had a picture of that. But you can see how his pressure, he's got like 60% on his right side, mm -hmm. not really leaning left enough. And his launch angle initially was 33 degrees. So Mike was, what's going on here? Right? <laughs> So, and he hadn't seen Austin in a couple months because he's been playing all over the place. So we started with that. And then the next swing, let's see here. We got the pressure up to 60% left, which was a little better. And we saw the launch angle come down a little bit better, but still not enough to keep Mike Bender happy or Austin because... <laughs> He knows the feeling of a well-struck wedge. It's like the, the cover is sticking against the wedge. You can feel all the spin coming off of it. So the next step was check out where this ball position is, everyone. All right. So Austin went from having the ball almost centered to now placing it under his right eye. And that was the magic move. So it was like this combination, right? The pressure was a little off. His ball position was a little off. And once he did um, that combination together, it was gold and it was a 25 degree launch angle with his lob wedge. Really? Then, he yep, went from 30 that. to 25? Wow. Uh, 33 to 25. It, okay. That's, now that's Austin amazing. has an amazing swing. <laughs> so let me just try to move this Okay, because most, I would say most amateurs launch the ball really high. The ball goes soaring up in the sky. So you wanna launch it lower and you wanna be consistent at launching in a certain trajectory. Then you can predict how far the ball's gonna go. Right. So the other thing here too, when Austin returns to impact, when he started with his pressure more on the left side, now his impact, I'm going to zoom it in here. Woo. If I could stop it here. Woo. Look what the pressure is. Look at that. He, does, he can lift his foot up. There's no weight. <laughs> I mean, are you kidding? I mean, these balls were just gripping his wedge. And Unbelievable. Let me tell you, he takes very shallow divots. His attack angle, like Zach Johnson's, it's only like four degrees down. So... Unfortunately, a lot of people, if they put the ball that far back, they might go crashing into the ground. But you, let me just show you his down the line picture, why he doesn't go crashing into the ground. Let's see. This is absolutely the coolest, most fascinating thing. I am so excited. Right, it's really cool. You could see, even though the swing is shorter, right? He's still getting a tremendous amount of depth. Okay, so his hands, if you drew a line down from the butt end of the golf club, which I will do with my V1 software, okay, <laughs> boom, it's like on his heel. Yeah. But most people have their hands maybe here somewhere, so there's not enough depth, and it's hard for the club now to shallow out, right? We need a shallow angle mm -hmm. to be able to play the ball that far back. But that's how you get those low penetrating spinning wedges with that combination. That is so cool. So is that the deal? Is that it's more consistent and you can, because they're asking, how did Mike Bender come up with a 25 degree launch angle with a 60 degree wedge? You know, it's funny, like you've mentioned, I worked with Mike for such a long time. He taught me the same method way before any of the technology was out, even the track man. But it's so cool that all this technology is available because everything that he's been teaching has been proven to be correct. <laughs> you know, so it's yeah. pretty ingenious. Um, but this is so cool to see the difference and how much weight is on his left side. 
Oh yeah. It's and amazing. again, you want, I'll, there's so much to describe about the wedges, but you want that shallower angle of attack too, because you don't want to be hitting high up on the wedge. Oh, this is one of Zach Johnson's old wedges, actually. That's How funny. Cool I just that? grabbed it out. It's all worn out in like uh, that area. Um, but you want to be hitting kind of the lower portion of your wedge. That's where the ball's going to spin more. Okay. Okay. But a lot of people hit it up here because their angle of attack is too steep. So the ball just kind of jumps out from a higher portion of the wedge. But when you come in shallower, you're going to hit it a little lower on the face. And especially when you have the D loft of the shaft angle, that's why you want your hands ahead. You want your pressure forward to compress that ball. Hit it low. Hands ahead, pressure way far left. What's a drill we can work on for this? Is there? Did you get him a drill to, to do that, or did you show it to him? What? Uh, he he's been doing I mean, that since he was like eleven years old. Well, I know this is pros. <laughs> what about the rest of us? <laughs> um. Well, I would say the most important thing besides the setup is really just getting that depth first for everybody. You got to have that first. And then let me go to the face on view. Let's see here. I think I have one of Mike hitting. Let's see if I have. Oh yeah, there's Mike. Nice. <laughs> All, right, All right, so let's look, at, let's look at his trace. How about this? We're gonna analyze Mike Bender's pressure. Is this a little, sh oh, I love it. Okay, so that ball's not moving too far into that trail side, right? That center yep. pressure ball. But at impact, this was his first swing of the day, by the way. <laughs> right, 83% 80, left. Look at the shaft lean, right? His hands are forward. Um, also notice the narrow stance, right? You don't want a really wide stance when you're hitting these distance wedges because you're not looking for distance. You want to have a narrower stance, ball back, also a slightly open stance because when you move the ball back, your path gets further right if you're a right-handed golfer. So opening the stance offsets that. But just, we do a lot of training of the hands. We really preach hands ahead and we do a lot of drills, like a line drill in the bunker, trying to get the divot to happen on the line going forward, not entering it behind. Um, so how far is that shot? Uh, it's about 70 to 80 yards. Okay. And it's spinning north of 9,000. And that's off of a mat with a range ball. Okay. So I've got a photo of Zach Johnson's data here. I think this would be cool for everyone to see. Yeah, that launched at 25. Okay. So look at the screen on the left, the 80 yard shot, 60 degree wedge. He's launching them 25 to 26 degrees, right? 9,800 revs. The path is 10 degrees right. Why do we want the path that far right? Because we want to hit draws. We preach hitting a draw as um, the shot pattern for several reasons. It's going to spin more. Um, also, you can be on the offensive when you're playing golf because now when you have this ball curving in, right, instead of hitting a straight shot, you right. can be offensive because you have a consistent shot pattern. Also with the majority of greens that we play, they're sloped from front to back. Uh -huh. So typically if you leave your ball on the right side of the pin, you're gonna have a right to left putt, which is a lot easier for the majority of us to make, right? right? So yeah. That's, that's so cool. Yeah, and the face has to be that close to the path to create that draw shape. Yeah, I thought that'd be cool for everyone to see. Can you share that picture with me? I'd like to put that in our recording um, as an oh, attachment. Oh, of course. That's so cool that you guys, I mean, that's that's really new information and so cool how the pressure mat is helping us get there. Um, yeah. I have a question from Roy Wall. Hi, Roy, nice to see you. Cheryl, do you think clubs are too upright um, lie angle since you want to shallow the club into hitting zone? Do I think clubs are too upright? Mm -hmm. Well, here's the thing with wedges. They're the most upright club in the bag, right? And we stand very close to the ball with the wedge. So it's going to be a steep, steep angle already. That's why we preach to make sure that you get your depth and come from the inside. Um, but our 
is he asking our people's wedges in general to upright? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, I, I, I haven't noticed that to be honest. Okay. Paul says, is asking, do you think the average person with a path 10 degrees to the right, it would be hard to manage the face? Well, that's why we, we, we train them to rotate the club and swivel the club with their wrists. Mm -hmm. Because once they're able to do that, a wedge is hard to draw, right? So we actually teach them to overdraw Can you show it. us Mike's swing again right there and slow it down at the wrist? That oh, sure. Up? I mean, we happen to have a pretty good example right there, right? Yeah, you'd probably want to see it um, a little more from Austin's down the line point of view. Yeah, maybe. But what's happening here is Mike's knuckles are turning down. Mm -hmm. They're swiveling. They're going through uh, ulnar deviation for the golf pros out there, right? So they're, the knuckles are rotating, ulnar deviating. Let me bring back Austin. I think you'll see it a little bit better. Uh, there we go. Cool. So like right about here, he's like twisting on that shaft. Mm -hmm. He's twisting it and closing that club face, right? So it's closing yep. as it's coming in, it's still, open at the target line, right? We don't want the ball to start left. Right. So like a degree open makes a big difference. And now watching the follow through here, you're gonna see the toe of that club yep. pass over. That's where I would say most amateurs have a hard time. They keep the face a little more on the open side because they're used to swinging more left, right? Swinging right. across the ball. So. We train the wrists a lot and you get the toe of the club into the impact bag for somebody who's struggling and just exaggerate that face closure. Okay, cool. Diane, thanks for the um, tuning in tonight. Shoot me a note and I'll get that graphic for you from Cheryl. Um, Uh, they're saying they love Mike's ball position as well. Triangle, left heel, right toe, right heel looks good. Thank you, Dennis. Um, Richard's asking if you got your clubs fitted, should your wedges be the same lie loft? Same lie and loft. Like all the wedges I'm assuming he's asking? Yep. I definitely wouldn't want the same loft. I mean, usually we like to see four degrees between our wedges. So if we have a 60 degree, we'd recommend a 56, a 52 and a 48 or some people have a 58, then a 54 and a 50, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so definitely not the same loft. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm gonna answer a question from Charles uh, and I would love for you to pull up some more, another student or some of Austin's videos. Um, Charles is asking about the difference between a firm bottom mat and a we don't, we only, V1 only uh, distributes the soft mat, um, Charles, and Greg does not work with us, but if you want to send me an email, the girls will share my email address. I'm happy to answer questions. Our mat is 9.6 pounds. It rolls up into a bag. Um, like I said, it can be used out on the course and it has a little piece of Velcro that sort of rolls it up. It's very easy to manage, um, but we do not have a hard bottom mat. Um, at all. Mandy, okay. do you want to see a full swing or a bunker yeah. shot? Ooh, you call I see some bunker shots. This is so good. We haven't seen this. <laughs> all right. So yeah, look at the body track. You just throw it into the bunker and I just shake it out when I'm done. I love it. Um, so, you know, there's two types of bunker players. You have certain bunker players that drag the handle through and they play more of a cut shot. And then you have what we like to teach, we release the club head and we get the ball to come out more straight and rolling into the pin. We don't like okay. seeing the cut pattern. So having said all that, you're gonna see Austin set up here. Now this first shot he hit, it, it was a little chunky. So <laughs> if, if you look at his pattern there, it's kind of even, right? It's like 50-50 right. pretty much. So, but you can also see how he keeps the pressure pretty centered. Then it's on that left side through impact, but definitely a little chunky. So it was great having the pressure mat there for him. 
and Mike. So what Mike did was he kind of, he got his pressure to go a little more left by getting the sternum a little more forward so you could see him pushing on his head, right? And then now we're up to 72% on the left. And this is all, you know, some people do better with their weight a little more even. We found out that Austin does best when he's like 65, 70. That's what felt good to him out of this sand, right? So of course there's lots of different sand textures around the country, but anyhow, this would be a stop bunker shot. So he's keeping the pressure left. And then as he comes through, watch how he releases the club head. Very different than that distance wedge now. So now we want that club head to completely pass the handle. Right? Very uh -huh. spooky motion. And uh, he was pretty happy with how that came out. But again, a lot of pressure on the left. And let's see what else we got here. Okay, and then he did it on his own without Mike holding his head. So yeah, he's finding that sweet spot for himself, about 70%. Look how steady his head is, right? There's no backup at God, all. That's well, so cool. <laughs> it looks like he's a damn professional. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if we could all copy that, that's my 1% better goal there. Right. But um, yeah, he's just, he's pretty wide with the stance as well, just to keep the lower body pretty quiet and it's a very fast wristy motion you're trying to impart a lot of club head speed to get the ball to come out with a lot of spin to come out high and short yep okay holly that's so cool to see that yeah do one um, more down the line here and again same thing we're st still preaching you know get the depth a lot of people try to come out to in and swing across the ball so we try to approach it pretty similar to our regular golf swing, but it's just a different release pattern. So again, the pressure staying left the whole time. He's releasing it hard. That was his best shot. He loved that one. Wow, that's awesome. And 86% of his weight's in his left foot. Yeah, and that's what I was trying to say before. Like, you might find that you're better off with 60% left, but it's great to have this data to know where you should be because mm -hmm. when things get off, then, okay, well, it's easy to throw Austin back on and let's check where, you know, you were right, good at exactly. before. Yeah. If you can't get there, something else might be going on with a hip or a knee or a, something else. Um, where Hold are on. the eyes at impact on all shots? Dennis is asking. I know I lift my left shoulder and eyes up too soon. He wants to know where his eyes at impact should be. Well, definitely your eye sockets should be looking at the ball. I mean, your head can swivel, but your eyes are able to still look at the ball. So, you know, some people do better looking at the back inside corner if they tend to perhaps come over the top. Mm -hmm. um, I, to be, I couldn't even answer where I look at the ball. I don't even know, but I do teach people certain parts of the ball to look at depending on their swing. Okay. Uh, we've got about 13 minutes left. Do we, we want to see some drivers. You got any full swings? Uh, yeah, sure. Well, let me and show I've you. I've got one. a couple driver uh, questions. They're asking for your favorite drill for increasing a player's speed. Um, and then in the full swing, when does the pressure start to move to the lead heel? So they're, they're looking for, we're looking. Oh, for okay. So good Look at this. Oh. Look at this. Can I tell you that he hits like 80% of his short game shots, the short shots 30 yards and in with one hand? Shut up. Are you serious? Yep. Okay. So I thought this was pretty cool to show everyone. Wow. But again, look how centered that pressure is. It is huh. not moving. Right? So how, he's, how tall is he? How, how big is he? Six, four. But okay, you can see how nicely the club overtakes, right? He's hitting a little higher, softer shot there using the bounce of the club. So, all right, I'll find Amazing. some full swings to show y'all. Cheryl, can he do that on tour? Yeah, he's been doing it. <laughs> it's really incredible. All right, here's, incredible. here's a driver's swing. Okay. All right, so this girl, she was complaining of not hitting it far, not hitting it um, high enough either. So, 
let's see here. I'm going to make this. I can't make it bigger because it's not on my V1 app. I took this off of the computer at work. But watch the white ball, everyone. See how by the time her left arm is halfway back, mm -hmm. preferably I'd like to see that white ball almost back to her right shoe. Okay, I, but it's not getting close to that. Anywhere near that, yeah. Very abbreviated. So she's not really storing up enough energy and she certainly can't push off of that right side now. She makes a, she's got a great swing. But again, that lack of power, she's already on her left side severely. Now she's going to have to back up a little bit to launch that ball with any height. Yep. Okay. Is that, so, is she from a different sport? Why is she, she looks super athletic. That's why I ask. Nope. She's been golfing most of her hmm. life. Now, this is like a week later. Wow. Look at, the, look at that. Look at the pressure. Now she's got it all the way back, 82% there, right? Yep. Then it's going to start to unweight as she goes to the top because now the club's more like over the ball there. So that's normal to see. Right, but now, I'm not kidding, she picked up like easily 10 yards, probably 15. She got it up to 96 miles per hour. Are you serious? Yeah, compared to about 90 which was where she started. It's amazing she could swing at 90 and when Cheryl, she was pretty much on her left side. Do? What else did you do in one week or two weeks with this student to get 10 or 15 yards other than talk about pressure and where she's using her power with the Well, I did, I did the step drill. So right. basically I had her um, stand with her feet together, right? And then step back, swing and hit the ball. I had her do that. You know, yeah, she only same. needed to do it like a few times and she started to get the feel. Um, I also the, yep. But I also had her watch herself with the body track and just make that ball move, get it over to that right foot. So, you know, can't tell you which one helped her the most, but who was one of those two? That Well, that both are, I love that drill. I love that drill on the mat too. That's a um, great drill on the mat. Great drill on the mat. And was there another question about a driver before I go on or? Let's see. They're your favorite drills for increasing a player's speed with driver, which. Well, drill, yeah. Increasing the speed. Yeah. Making sure the pressure's in the right spot. Um, just getting people to swing faster too with their, with their hands and their arms. I find that a lot of People just don't turn turn the arms on quick enough, especially juniors too. They're using their body so much. They're not strong enough yet. Yep. Part of the reason, but a lot of swoosh drills, um, just holding a club in the trail hand, not a club and alignment stick and just kind of getting them to swing back and swing through and just re-hinge it, you know, mm -hmm. make sure you re-hinge the alignment stick. So it's pointing up Yep. that speed. I'm a big fan of those speed sticks too. I think yeah. those have been successful. I do too. I like those as well. Um, Who's this guy? He's a little 12 year old boy. He's so cute. Um, he had a big Z trace <laughs> again. So let me get the, the pictures in the right order here. So that was his impact. Look where the pressure was. 13% on his lead foot. <laughs> okay. Again, a good driver of the ball, but struggled with the irons like the other girl. Mm -hmm. So now look where it is now. Oh, look at that. Holy mackerel. This He's is got in, to have that. I mean, that's, that's, that's in five minutes. Unbelievable. Can Want to know the secret? That? Yeah. What was the secret? <laughs> I mean, look at that impact, right? It's unbelievable. Um, let me go back here too. Here's the face on. You could see that. Oh left yeah. Foot. He's completely off it, jumping. Off it up, right? So yep. I had him do, Greg Norman was kind of, uh, he was the number one player in the world. He, he would swing like that. See how that right foot just slid back? Yeah. Pushing the force back that way. So I had him do that a few times and he started to get the hang of it. And then it was 
a little less each time, but look at the difference in that. Unbelievable. That is right? so cool. Just watch again. So his sequencing is a ton better. His arms aren't getting stuck behind his body, right? 94% on the left foot, just from doing the right drill. Love it. So I'm very thankful for the body track because it's, it's just a great tool that I don't have to guess. You know, I know where it is. And it just takes a lot of, a lot less time for me to find the right drill. I love that the, the mat's just so easy and it gives you data. And I, you know, to hear from people like you, what you do with it is the cool thing, right? Like you're that little drill, that little Greg Norman slide drill. What do you call that? Greg Norman, right foot kickback drill? Yeah, I drill. call it the Greg Norman drill. <laughs> Greg Norman drill. I mean, There's that's a great thing. I'm sure Jim Altamirano is probably doing that right now. And then, you know, the, the short game stuff is just fascinating. There's a fish hook pattern. That guy's path was 18 degrees right. Holy mackerel. Duck hook city. Okay. Chunk city too. Do I have time for one more or are we done? Yeah, yeah, you do. Absolutely. All right. So Paul, if you're watching, hello. I think he is. But um, here, this gentleman was. Is this Paul? Yeah. So you could see his setup with his irons. I like to see kind of a 60, 40. 55% on the lead side. So he was the opposite, right? He was like 60% on the right side. And he didn't know it, right? He couldn't feel that. Right. That's like when you tell people get on your toes and heels, it just feels so different. So it's, again, it's nice to have the mat there. So then by the time he swung back, he had a tremendous amount of pressure in that trail foot, like way too much. There's 93% pressure there for an iron. You don't want that at all. You want, you already want to be moving, you know, to your left side. Right. So what I did was, oh, and back there at impact, impact, he was like 50, 50, wasn't really compressing it. So I used this uh, pressure board and just got him to feel like he's going to get to that left side a little quicker recenter himself. And then this was like two swings later. So again, he's starting with a little more pressure on the left. Still needs more. You could see that pressure didn't get as far back in that right foot this time. Yep. Right. And now at impact, now we're talking, we're up to 80% on the left. Whew. God, right? it's, it's amazing how quickly you're making these changes. It is. It's really amazing. Now, just because they can do it doesn't mean they've learned it yet. That's the key for everyone to understand, right? You're, you're experiencing it. You're getting the right feel, but it's something that you now have to go practice and make it part of your system. That's, that's a, well, and it's like the 1%, right? If you do a little bit of every day, then. 1% better. That's right. 1% better. <laughs> stick with it, you know, it just keep, once you know what the right feel and right move is, just repeat it, just trust it. Some days will be better than others, but, um, you know, just keep at it. Yep. So really quickly, um, that my girls who are awesome and they're watching and they support me and they send us all kind of cool information throughout the webinar. Um, when they heard me mention that we were, we gave you the V1 uh, master certification, they sent through a stat. And I just wanted to tell you how busy you've been this year because the Mike Bender Academy has sent out the third most online lessons of all the V1 um, golf instructors. And you have sent so, so far in 2020, 6,311 voiceover videos. Yeah, I believe it. <laughs> So, so you really, so it's the 29th, you should take a day off. <laughs> you should send a few more lessons out and then take a day off. <laughs> yeah, that's right. I want to get to the point where I'm just sitting at my computer and doing my golf lessons here. No, just kidding. No, I like you, being with we, people we, and yeah, you, you do. know, you're doing so, seeing so the ball so play. What, what is your advice for our golf games in 2021? Oh, enjoy your games. Find a good coach, right? PGA, LPGA coach. Um, that uses V1 and body track and trust them, like emerge yourself in the process, like taking one lesson 
really isn't going to do it. You need to, it's like that boy, Chris Nickich. You've got to have a plan and you need supervision. Um, Unfortunately, people think they got it during one lesson and they get frustrated if things aren't working well and they abandon it. But you need to be coached and you need to trust somebody that can help you through the process. And there's so many good coaches out there and they I'm sure they have some kind of coaching, you know, package that you can be a part of. Right. That is that is uh, that's awesome. We all want to take lessons from you, Cheryl. My, my team is, we have this Slack and they're all messaging. They're like, we all hey, want to take lessons. Send me an online one. It's we on will. me. We will. You can find Cheryl a few things about, seriously, all of my girls right now, I don't know if you can hear, hear them banging at me. They're like, we all want to go. So oh. um, a few things. Cheryl wrote a book. The girls will send you, your book. It, is Amazon yeah. the best place to access, to right. get your book? Yeah, yeah, you remember that book you wrote about the golf I, swing? I love that book. It's so hard to get right now. I need to do, a, I need to do well, another one. I was able to, my team, my girls, I think I hopefully will post it. I was able to find it on Amazon. <laughs> there it is. There's the link. So you guys, Cheryl, everybody. Buy the used me, version. <laughs> buy a used version, right. Maybe it'll have some notes from you in it. But um, everybody's been commenting how awesome your information was tonight. So thank you for sharing uh, what you, um, what you do Thanks for having so me, well. everyone. Thanks for watching. Yes. Thank you for your time. Go find her book. Go follow Cheryl on Instagram, and uh, we'd love to have you back if you have time in the new year. Yeah, thank you so much, Mandy and Anna Bye, for setting this up. Bye, everyone. Happy New Year, everyone. Cheers. Happy New Year. Make birdies. <laughs>